Hello everyone and welcome to week two of Literature 221, American Literature from the Civil War to Present. I am Mrs. Driver, Mrs. Beth Driver, and I am excited to get into the next week of our course. So before you start the readings, or you probably have started the readings already, which is terrific, I just wanted to go through a couple of things with you. I know that you have a forum due this week. You also have a paper due this week. And most of you are probably familiar with writing essays, but I did want to review that as well with you. Okay, so of course, this week, please make sure to read my announcement to you. It's very short. Then I want you to go to the lessons. And I want you to definitely read through lesson two thoroughly. There is a lesson overview, as you know. It tells you what our objectives are. Um, the focus this week is realism. Now, realism isn't necessarily, it's a style, but it's a style that was a focus during the uh, turn of the 20th century. Many authors wrote in this style, uh, dealing with issues that faced people, dealing with social issues of the time period. The characters were realistic. The settings were very real, of course, and ne not necessarily a, the endings weren't always pleasant. So... That was kind of just the, the way people wrote in America during the 20th century. And so we're going to kind of focus on some of the issues that the writers this week brought to the forefront. And uh, we'll also discuss uh, gendered and feminist criticism, and I'll talk about that in a second. And we'll also figure out within your essays how to incorporate source material appropriately. And I'll go through that with you today as well. Okay, so let's click on Next. And then here is what I want to make sure you realize that you do need to click on this link at the link at the bottom of the reading and resources to understand the weeks and to obtain the week's lesson. So I'm going to click on that briefly, but then I'm going to, while it's being pulled up, I'm going to go to the actual lesson. So when you launch the lesson, I want you to read the lesson in its entirety. And then I want you to kind of go through what I mean by realism. Remember last week we talked about romanticism and how uh, humanity is kind of one with nature and we just look at the awesome beauty of nature, even in the smallest details, for example, Walt Whitman's spider. Well, realism is kind of a reaction to that. And realism basically uh, portrays the country accurately, and that's very important, that word accurately. It also uh, shows issues that people face during this time period. And so when we talk about realism, it's really just a literary movement that occurred during the turn of the century. Okay? And then uh, the lesson also goes through some of the authors. I'm trying to see if there's anything else that I'm not going to... Okay. Okay. Good. So just basically read through the lesson. I'll give you an idea of what the authors are, who the authors are, their background, and also gives you a basic idea of what uh, themes you usually see during readings of this time period. Okay. And so this is also useful. First person, the yellow wallpaper is written in first person. But just because a work, and also uh, Mending Wall, the poem is actually first person. But just because the po a, a work is written in first person, it doesn't necessarily mean that the person is the author. Now, your lesson says that uh, this perspective, the first person perspective in the yellow wallpaper is interesting because Gilman herself suffered from depression. And the character, the main character, suffers from depression and some say it's because she had postpartum depression well Gilman suffered from that from that as well however the person in the yellow wallpaper is not Gilman that is it is semi-autobiographical but she wrote a work of fiction how do we know this 
Well, the authors, the unnamed narrator, some say she might be Jane because she does refer to a woman at the end by the name Jane. So she could have been referring to herself. But the unnamed narrator, her husband has a different name than Gilman's husband. And her husband has a different career than Gilman's actual husband had. So they're not the same people. It's not her life. She did not lose her mind and believe that there, she may have, she may have believed there was a woman in the wallpaper. However, she is not expecting you to think that that is her. Okay. It's based on what she experienced most likely, but it is not her. Okay. So I just wanted to point out that to you. So we're also going to be reading uh, Mark Twain's War Prayer. And Mark Twain's War Prayer is interesting because it's a satirical view on war. And um, during the turn of the 20th century, he was calling out about uh, maybe perhaps the uh, American tendency to enter in war for not a strong reason. And he's not referring to the Civil War. Some say he might have been referring to the Spanish-American War, but it's not the Civil War. So kind of read through that and see what you feel. Are you offended by his portrayal of war? Are you, are, are, how do you feel about his argument against war or people's um, view that war is potentially a good thing? Just kind of read through it and see if you can pick up on his satire Oftentimes, students like to focus on this work in their first essay, and that's fine. Um, but just keep in mind that it is satire, okay? It's meant to be a little tongue-in-cheek. The next paper, uh, story that we'll be focusing on this week is... Oh, and also, I wanted to go back to this. Um, some say that it is a prose poem. So if you refer to this as a poem, that's fine. But uh, to me, it's more of a short story, so... It is funny. So many people have already rated it and they didn't really like it very much. <laughs> Yellow wallpaper. I like that rating right there. Anyway, so the old wallpaper, um, I've referred to that already. Um, it is Charlotte Perkins Gilman taking her experiences with postpartum depression. And it was called The Rest Cure. And what they did during the turn of the century is women who had a postpartum depression, also known as quote unquote hysteria, um, if they experienced this, what they what the practice was to have women go into their bedrooms or a room without any sort of disturbances or reading materials or anything like that, and they were supposed to rest, and that was supposed to cure them of their depression. Naturally, knowing what we know today, this wasn't very effective, and we see how ineffective it is in Charlotte Pearl Lund Perkins Gilman's The Yellow Wallpaper. And it is kind of a tricky work, but do what you can with it, and we'll discuss it in the forums. And just let me know if you have any questions about it. Next, we have Robert Frost's Mending Wall. And it's, this is kind of, it's a short poem. It shouldn't take you too long to read. But it, it you could pull up a lot about uh, life and about society through this simple little poem. Um, when you're when you're thinking about the poem, kind of think about the relationship between the narrator, not necessarily Frost, it may have been Frost, it could have been Frost, but we can't make that assumption. You need to separate the poet from the main character of the poem. Um, think about the relationship he has with his neighbor. And although he doesn't necessarily agree with the wall, and perhaps good friend uh, good fences don't make good neighbors, but in a way it is kind of ironic that he doesn't agree with the wall, and yet the relationship continues when they both mend that wall. I thought that was just an interesting aside, but I'd be interested in seeing what your take on it is. Next, we have Richard Corey and Miniature TV. Now, both of these works are by Edwin Arlington Robinson. Probably you're familiar with Richard Corey, um, perhaps not with the other work, but it basically deals with class. And, and they're fairly easy to understand, so I think you'll enjoy them. And you probably uh, have read Richard Corey in high school. But if you haven't, don't worry about it. It's, it's, they both are, in my view, fairly easy to understand. But if you have problems with them, just let me know. And then we have two peer-reviewed articles. Um, basically, I'm Robert Frost. They offer an interpretation of uh, Mending Wall in both of these works. You don't have to agree with these works. 
uh, the work's uh, interpretation of Mending Wall. Just read it and, you know, tell me what you think. Finally, we have three articles that will help you with your essay due this week. I'm going to upload a, um, a lesson that discusses how to write a short story essay, but that also works with a, a poem. So if you choose to write, I'm going to click out of here. If you choose to write about a poem or one of the poems or a, one of the short stories, either way it's fine. The lesson should help you and make it fairly clear about what uh, my expectations are. Now let's kind of take a look at this assignment. Note that you choose one topic, not all topics, one topic. Okay, I've had students in the past try to write on all three in their essay and that obviously will not work. Now it has to be 500 to 750. As you would imagine, the 750 word essay will probably do slightly better than a 500 word essay because that shows me that you wrote an in-depth analysis. Okay, so option one is write a critical analysis from one of the works from weeks one or two. Okay, so it has to be on one of those works. An overview of critical sources are through that link. Um, the one that you're probably most familiar with is, and it's not listed on here, it's New Criticism. It's just basically writing about the theme of a work. Um, that's Formulist is, is very similar to New Criticism. So even though the definition here is a little tricky, basically it's just showing how the structure's form uh, emphasizes a point within the novel, uh, within the work. So basically the theme. Biographical criticism. Oftentimes I have students write about biographical criticism. Um, my advice would be to probably not use biographical. I'm, I, I'm not going to tell you no, but I don't want you to focus on biography. Only focus on biography as it relates to the actual work, okay? Um, I don't care about Frost's biography. I want to know how his biography lend himself to write Mending Wall, perhaps. Okay, so anything you discuss that's biographical should help you prove a point about the actual work. And the same with historical criticism. The history that you discuss, discuss in your work should be proving a point about that literature piece, literary piece. And the same holds true for all of these. Uh, mythological criticism, if you want to use it, you can. It sounds. It, I think it would be a little tricky, but it would be interesting to see how you would uh, connect this to myths, the readings this week to myths. Reader uh, response. Um, the tricky thing with readers, it's, it's basically how groups respond, how a group would respond to a particular work. For example, how... Uh, women would respond to the yellow wallpaper. Um, you can do this one, but it's a little tricky because you have to write this in third person. So you can't refer to yourself in this particular mode of criticism. Personally, I think the easiest ones would be formalist, uh, biographical, although make sure you don't write author biography, historical, or even gender or psychological. Okay? Next one is compare to... Uh, in contrast to the stories from weeks one and two, I'm also going to let you compare and contrast two of the poems. It says stories. I'll go back and change that because there's only one real story there, and that's you know yellow wallpaper. So you can you can do two uh, poems, and then also again, if there's an aspect of the stories, I would say poems from these two weeks that particularly interest you. You may choose your own topic. But you need to email me ahead of time. Okay? And again, I am going to go through and uh, um, with my other lesson and show you how to write a short story essay. But make sure you double space your essay. You format it in MLA style. And uh, this shows you, this uh, document shows you how to use proper MLA format. You put your name. Uh, well, this actually should have your name here. This is the instructor's name, so this should be changed. So let's say your last name is Smith. It should be Smith, page one. And I'm going to do a little adjustment here. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to insert. I'm going to click on page numbers. I'm going to go into position the page numbers to the top of the page. 
and then to the right. I'm going to double click and then I'm going to position the cursor to the left. Right, let's say the student's last name is Smith and then I'm going to highlight that and change the font to 12. And that's how you insert your page numbers. Okay, but I do agree with the pagination. And uh, I do agree with the point about the title should not be underlined, italicized, all in caps. However, I also want to point out to you that for the first essay, uh, I want you to try to format your essay correctly. However, if you have difficulties, I'll fix it for you. And then for your next es essay, my expectations for formatting will be a bit more because I've shown you. So I want you to look at my notes about this first essay. Mainly, I'm looking for you to write this in third person, use an academic tone. I want you to have an introduction that's at least five sentences long. I want you to end your introduction with a thesis statement. I want you to have body paragraphs that prove that thesis statement. And I want you to focus mainly on the literary work, not on biography, only biography as it relates to the literary work, only history and relates how it relates to the literary work. Then I want a conclusion that's at least five sentences, and I want you to cite the work MLA style. Okay, I guess that's it for the week. However, if you have any questions at all, please, please email me I'm or message me. I will be more than happy to answer any of your questions. If it's a general question and you think the entire class could benefit from your question, please go ahead and go to the forums. And I want you to post your question in the course questions area of the classroom. All right. Have a great week, everyone. I'm looking forward to talking with you about the readings this week. Take care.